Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and today is a day that uh, it wasn't actually that hard. It's because I've had so many projects in between all of this is what's made it difficult, but uh, we're, we're done. So we have a total of five CPU coolers, three that were provided by manufacturers, one that I've had for two years, so do keep that in mind. The Corsair H100i may have some degradation due to it being a few years old, <clears throat> and then the stock cooler. And now what we're gonna see is if you're gonna spend between 80 and $100, this is kind of what you're gonna see. Uh, two AIOs, there's a couple in that, in that market, and two large dual tower air coolers. So kind of some of the better of the best. Um, got as many samples as I could. So, we're gonna take a look at my testing methodology, why I did it, and then we're gonna go over some results, and then we're gonna hopefully, hopefully crown champion. Let's go over testing methodology first. Actually, let's go over test system first and methodology. Ryzen 5 3600, and Asus ROG Strix B450-F gaming motherboard. Uh, two by eight gigabyte of G-Skill DDR4 3600 megahertz CL19. We have a crucial P1500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Then we have two products supplied by Be Quiet. The Silent Base 801 in the stock configuration. Fans always set to 1000 RPM, which is max. It's pretty quiet still. The Be Quiet Pure Power 11 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply. And then the EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. Now, let's talk about the testing methodology. All these temperatures are over ambient. Ambient at the highest was 21.8, I believe. And ambient at the lowest was about 20.5. Very little difference. So the testing should be more or less very close. I use precision boost overdrive. So that is going to yield a little bit different results because it has to do with temperatures and all that stuff. But that's a real world example, which is why it's really important not to you know, do a, a, a perfect scenario setup because nobody's gonna run into those 18 degrees Celsius um, perfect scenarios. Uh, the two games did have my standard testing methodology, which is you have all your uh, monitoring software open and you also have uh, four Chrome tabs, the usual. So you'll see that there. And that's pretty much kind of it. So let's go over my notes. So. The Captain 240 RGB, uh, easy, relatively easy to install. I, I'm not a fan of how the um, tubes are top bottom that side to side. It does make it a little bit trickier, but overall pretty easy to install. Uh, really, really nice to look at. I really like uh, how AIOs look. Um, and um, it was relatively quiet. The fans don't get too, super loud. And the quality was decent. Uh, the NHD 15, super quiet, super easy to install. Um, as you see, performance numbers are, are quite solid. Um, really good build quality. That German engineer, of course, be, be quiet, it's also German engineer as well, but uh, not to a German engineer product. Uh, I have to say it has lived up to the hype that this is a fantastic product. It has a soft foam that was shipped in. It has everything you'll need and it was relatively easy to install inside of a case. Dark Rock Pro 4, very, very similar. Uh, it's very quiet. Um, build quality is solid. Very easy to install. Uh, very pleasing to look at. It is sharp. I, I did slice myself, so just note that. Not to say the other ones aren't sharp, but I've, it, it is a little on the sharp side, so keep that in mind. And the screwdriver, which I don't have in front of me. That is amazing. I'm keeping it. <laughs> That's kind of my notes. Um, overall, I didn't have any serious issues with any of the coolers, so to keep that in mind. Now, let's take a look at some benchmarks here. So, first things first, let's dive into Cinebench. And this is pretty straightforward. These tests were repeatable. Uh, we were on the stock cooler just shy of 60 degrees Celsius over ambient. And then as soon as we hit the liquid cores, we see about a 14 uh, degree drop on the H100i, and then um, right around 17, 18 degree drop for the Corsair, or for the uh, Captain 240 RGB. 
And then we see even a little bit further with the Dark Rock Pro, and then even further with the NHD 15 uh, being 42.1 degrees over ambient, 41.5 degrees over ambient, the winner being the NHD 15. Now, Blender, um, very, very similar result. The stock cooler was 63.5 degrees over ambient. It was getting pretty close to the down clock level. Uh, the H100i cleaned it up by about 13 degrees, as did the Captain 240. And then the uh, air cores, the uh, Dark Rock Pro 4 actually trimmed off another 5 degrees at 45.1, and then the NHD 15 sh uh, shed off another 1.5 degrees over ambient as well. So very impressive there. Intel burn test, uh, a little bit, a very similar story as well, so 63.5 almost over ambient for the stock cooler. The liquid cores did a little bit better here. They were below 50, so um, we have the RGB Captain, um, 48.5, and the H1i did a little bit better. Mind you, those fans do spin up to a higher RPM, like 3100. Uh, one degree cooler, and then the NHD 15 actually got squeaked out by 0.2 degrees by the Dark Rock Pro 4, so a slim, slim victory there. Uh, let's take a look at superposition. Now, this is not CPU bound. This has th this test is really nice because we're really going to show with a, a GPU load how that affects CPU temps. So the stock cooler obviously did the worst, 43 and a half degrees over ambient. Uh, the Captain 240 came in at 30 and a half degrees over ambient. The H100i squeaked out about another 0.7, and then the NHD 15 scored 26.8 over ambient, but the Dark Rock Pro 4 wins this one at 25.2, at 1.6 degrees over ambient. So uh, that is the synthetics. Uh, actually, no, I think there's one more yet. Yeah, 3D Mark Time Spy, let's put it up there. Uh, stock core did 57.4 degrees over ambient. This is, by the way, extreme, uh, just the CPU test. Uh, the Captain 240 did a fair bit better, about nine degrees better. The H100i swings in about 0.7 better than that at 47.9. Dark Rock Pro 4 trims off about 5.5 degrees off of the uh, liquid coolers over here. And then the NHD 15 only sheds off 0.3, winning this test. Let's, uh, let's look at some gaming benchmarks here. So let me go ahead and pull them up. So we have, let's start off with the Division. So the Division 2, we were looking at anywhere from 105 to 108 FPS. And what's interesting is this has to do with the way Precision Boost Overdrive works. Once we start to get the higher thermal limits in these games, even if we're not like thermal throttle like in the, um, in the Division 2, for example, the highest we saw was like 67 degrees, not over ambient, like total, but we were only about 108 FPS. We squeaked out two more FPS with no manual overclocks, just upgrading to cooling, and then one FPS for the rest of them. Ghost Recon Wildlands was a three FPS spread, uh, going from about 105 to about 108 with the two air coolers, and even the mid 107s with the two AIOs. Uh, superposition, not so much of a difference. It's only a one degree spread. We start about the high 88s, uh, and then we end up in the high 89s with the air coolers finishing about an FPS ahead of the stock, and the AIOs finishing in the middle of there. So that's, that's definitely something interesting uh, to note. Let's look at some performance numbers. So we have Cinebench first. So with Cinebench, we scored uh, at stock 3580. Uh, with the H100i, we had a nice boost, about 70 points. Then we had another like eight points to the Captain 240. We had another 11 points to Dark Rock Pro 4, and then we actually saw like a 13 point game of the NHD 15. And then I thought Time Spy was kind of interesting. So when we look at the performance numbers for that, Time Spy, we were in the uh, low 33, so 33, 39 with the stock cooler. A big jump just getting, you know, liquid cooling, so 3391, 3399 for the H100i. And both of these scored over 3400, and that would be the Dark Rock Pro 4 at 3412 and the NHC 15 at 3427. So again, we're seeing the precision boost giving you, give you better synthetic in-game performance with just leaving alone adding some air coolers or uh, coolers in general liquid or air this next chart i always do these 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 
I'll take a little bit of explanation. So what I do is I take the best in each category, run the results of each individual part against that, and you get a, a score. So in reference to temperature, uh, the NHD15 won both synthetic and uh, gaming, so it was at 100%. Compared to the stock Kohler, from a percentage standpoint, it performed about 66%, 69% in gaming and synthetics in reference. The H100i scored in gaming uh, just a hair under 86 and a hair over 89 synthetics. The Deep Cool Captain 240 RGB scored uh, just a hair over 90 and a hair under 90 gaming and synthetics. The Dark Rock Pro 4 scored in gaming uh, just a hair under 97 and a hair under 100%. So that's what that means. But the important one that um, is pretty relevant is the overall. So what we do is I average those together and that's not as important, but we wanna take a look at cost. The cost of this system is roughly 1150-ish, give or take, without a cooler. It's a number that I've worked with for a while. And when you add the cost of CPU cooler, that adds anywhere from $75 to $90 to the total. But the stock cooler doesn't add anything. So from a value standpoint, what I do is I then take a value. So the value for the stock cooler is 100%, H100 was 94, then the rest of them were 93, like 92, 92, 93, because they were all the same price. So then I multiply those by the average performance of the gaming and synthetics. So what we have here is a stock core offers an overall value from a cost and performance standpoint, 68%, not fantastic. The H100i uh, offers at 82%. Now, again, the H100i is an older unit, it's version two, so there might be some degradation. So I knew one may perform better, but I did happen to have that in here. The Deep Cool um, Captain 240 RGB scored 84%. And the Dark Rock Pro 4 scored 91%, and the NHD 15 scored 93%. So nobody was going to get 100% because nobody won every category there. So that really tells you that the kind of value that getting an aftermarket cooler really brings. And lastly is my scoring. Now this scoring is very subjective. So keep that in mind. It is not an end-all be-all. This is what Steve from Big Head Tech thinks. So from installation standpoint, the stock core is technically the easiest. It's the least involved. Um, all of these require the removal of the stock mounting for some reason or another. Uh, so stock core scored a perfect five for that. Uh, the H100i, I felt was uh, very easy inside of a case or outside. So this is kind of considering installing inside of a case. Um, 4.5, 4 the Captain 240 did not score as well because of the way the tubes are. It makes it a little bit more difficult to mount. Uh, it was a little tricky for me the first couple of times, so it didn't do as well, 4.0. And then both of these air coolers were perfectly fine inside of the case, really no problems at all, 4.5. Appearance, this is very subjective. This is probably more subjective than installation. There's really very few systems I would, I would um, put this in if it had a window. It, it generally, it's one of those things where if color is not important, then go with it. Like I'd put this in a server all day or a system where I'm not focusing on looks. The problem is, is you can dress this up for like an extra, oh God, it's, a, it's not cheap. Like you're gonna almost double the Kohler price and then you lose all the value you get from getting an HD 15. So it didn't do all well, 3.0. Um, or th uh, three point, yeah, three point five. Excuse me. The stock cooler actually did worse at three point oh, which is kind of so shocking. But I think it just looks kind of crappy in any system. Uh, the H one hundred I gets a three point five because it doesn't have the the fans that come with it. They're not RGB. They're just really basic. Um, I'm just not a huge fan. You know, one of the things I like about AIOs is the fact that you can really dress up a system, make it look cool. So it actually scored very similar to the NHD 15. Uh, and then the Captain 240 and the Dark Rock Pro 4 both scored a 4.5. The RGB is really cool, and then the really sleek design of the Dark Rock Pro 4 is just really, really, really cool looking. You can get like a really blacked out system. Sound, stock cord and horrible, three. <laughs> Uh, the H100i, 3.5, not uh, particularly great either. The fans get really loud on that. Uh, the Captain 240 scored a four. The fans aren't, aren't too bad. 
I think they max out like 8, 10, 15 or 1800 RPM, so they're, they're okay. The HD 15, five best fans out there. Dark Rock Pro 4, the silent wing, smidge behind that at 4.5. Uh, performance was actually a calculated number, and that was based off of not the NHD 15 doing the best. Uh, this is, I just pulled, the, what I did was I took 5.0, times it by the percentage. So this, since this scored 100% in um, performance, that's where that scored, and that one's a pretty calculated number. Uh, value, again, this is based off of the previous slide. I took five times the percentage value. Final score. And the winner goes to the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. I tested four products, three were review samples, and I get to keep all of them. They all have a different place. The NHD 15 is the best cooler under $100. Now I know I didn't test every cooler under $100. Not everybody would give me one. But based off of working with like the Cryo Rig uh, R1 Universal, for example, it is the best cooler. However, it's not the best looking cooler. And to dress it up, you're going to spend as much money as a 360 rad that can give you better performance. So that's kind of the downside. So if you're looking to spend under 100 US dollars and want the best cooler, don't care what it looks like, the NHD 15. German engineer, great build quality, easy to install, but make sure you have the clearance. The Captain 240 RGB. <clears throat> Why would you want that? You can't fit one of these two, so you have a smaller case. Uh, you can support a 240 rad. You want better than stock performance, a decent gain. Um, you will be giving up a little bit of performance for e um, better case compatibility and RGB. But this is going to be compatible with most modern motherboards. And they even include an RGB controller if your case doesn't support that. So that's kind of where a lot of these $80 to $100 AIOs come in at. And you don't get quite the performance of these two, but you do get better compatibility and, in this case, RGB. Dark Rock Pro 4, why would I recommend it? Um, because Be Quiet keeps sending me products, so I should, no, no, not at all. Um, I would actually, that's my first recommendation. Couple reasons. It does need quite as much clearance as the NHD 15 by about 2.2 uh, inches. I think it's 162.8 versus 165. Uh, RAM clearance doesn't seem to be a problem with even my G-Skill memory, but it's not as tall. It can go into most systems. If you want RGB 100% everything, then no. But you can put this in a system with some RGB and it would work fine with because it has that black stealth look. You give up a teensy bit of performance over the NHD 15, but you gain so much in regards of just aesthetics. And that is why I am putting that in my test system. So be quiet, you are now having three products in my test system, plus I'm now gonna be using your screwdriver. It tells you they're doing something right. Uh, it's very good build quality like the NHG 15. Uh, their support, their mounting mechanism, everything's good about it. And I mean, I have great things to say about the Captain 240 as well. Um, solid um, design, solid build quality, and it looks really cool. But the official winner, Be Quiet, wins this one. But I do want to give a shout out to Noctua, Deep Cool, and Be Quiet for supplying these, uh, really appreciate it. I hope, um, I hope I can continue doing, getting some more products from these companies because I really do enjoy reviewing them. And I only tend to review products I believe that will perform well. And all these, I think, performed well enough to give a recommendation. So if you wanna buy any of these products, link in the description below. Um, if you liked this video, if you liked it, dislike or dislike, leave a comment, get subscribed. But as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.